Hi everyone. Um, I am here today because I want to show you all how to properly graph something in Google Sheets when you have data. Um, I want to use the data that we had collected during our measurement lab recently to kind of go over and explain the steps in order for you to properly create a graph and have all the pieces that we are looking for um, when wanting to interpret a graph and to also figure out what relationships there may be between the two variables. So um, on the screen right now, you see I have a bunch of my student initials from um, uh, when we collected our data for this lab. We looked at the um, one of the variables, which is the time until your birthday in days. And I had all my students sit there and um, get this number put onto our data sheet. And then we all measured our uh, the length of our foot and we recorded that information in this third column. So if you notice in the columns themselves, the one thing you have to make sure to do is um, properly label them at the top so that the, um, the person looking at this data table, first of all, knows what information they're looking at. And also um, when we actually try and graph it, that actually helps automatically label the graph um, axes. So um, in here, we have three different columns. The one that we uh, don't really care about are the student initials. When we're looking to see what the relationship is between how many days you have until your birthday and the length of your foot, your initials don't really matter at all. And so we're going to ignore this first column here. Um, so I'm not gonna do anything with that. Now, time until birthday right here, um, if you notice, that's our variable, time until your birthday. In the uh, in parentheses are the units, that's in days. Um, this could have also been minutes or years or whatever it may be. But for our sake, we were saying this is in days. The length of your foot is the other variable that we were going to measure to compare and see if there is a relationship, and that was in centimeters. So when it comes to actually graphing this, let's take a look and double check that all the data is nice and good. So, so far, all of this looks good. There's numbers. If you notice, there are no units um, in, these, uh, in these cells. So for example, if I had a student that put something like days here, that actually wouldn't graph, okay? So um, that's something that's great that I had my students figure out. Oh, hang on. I think at 67 days, I would have just messed with our data. So there's that. Let's keep going and double checking. Oh, look here. Was four when recorded. Hmm. So if I were to graph this right now, um, I would end up getting an error message. So instead, I'm going to delete that. Hang on, I gotta sneeze. Um, and let's just put four, because a graph doesn't understand those letters. It understands numbers. So now we're go back up, and then I'm gonna highlight the data that I want as part of the graph. Okay, there's that. And then the next step is you go to insert, and then you go to chart here, and you click it. Depending on the amount of data that you have, um, that might take a little bit of time. This one's pretty quick, so it may take a couple of seconds. So I'm gonna move this over here right now. If you notice, and actually let's bring it all the way up here so that we can compare it with our data. If you notice in this graph right now, um, we have a title. We have our y-axis and our x-axis already labeled for us. And the reason that is, is because we actually properly, properly labeled them in our data table. Now, the other thing you may notice is, and I'm gonna kind of move my camera, or let's move this thing. Um, there we go, okay. Whoa, that's super big. Um, let's move it over here since we don't really need my face to be blocking stuff right now. So when you make a chart, a lot of the times um, the Google Sheets actually assumes um, what type of graph you're trying to make depending on the data that you have. And so right now, this uh, Google Sheets assumed I wanted a scatter chart, which is actually exactly what I wanted. Now, this chart editor pops up for you, and this is what you're going to need in order to um, 
customize your graph and add the specific features on there that we as um, scientists are curious about the most. So um, if for some reason you're like, um, Google Sheets just assumes you want a graph like this, a smooth line graph. It'll give you some type of graph that looks like this. And this is not what you want. So sometimes it automatically gives you a wrong type of graph. So you can go fix that. All the way here, you can notice all these different types of graphs that are available. We only want to use a scatter plot graph, scatter plot chart or graph. Um, now, I'm going to go over some of these features here in the setup part as well, but a lot of these you are usually not going to need, actually. And so um, the, da the data range is basically telling you what part of the graph that the data is actually being taken from. So if you notice here, it says B1. So just like the game Battleship, if you've played it or if you've seen the movie, um, B1 is basically telling you to go look at the data in one specific cell. And a cell is like a box like this. That's what we call it in Google Sheets. Oh boy, did you notice I lost my, th okay, let's click that again. And there we go. So B1 would be B and then the first line. So it's saying that I'm using the data range all the way from B1 to C37. So this all the way to C and then all the way down to 37, and that's exactly what we did. So let's go back to this now. Um, this you're normally not going to have to touch. Same with these features here. This usually is already automatically figured out for you. Um, and then over here, you'll notice there's this one thing that um, isn't checked. It's called switch rows and columns. Sometimes it happens where your rows and columns are switched off in the actual graph. And if you click this, it'll fix that for you. But we actually don't, oi, oi, what happened? Hold on, what did I do here? See what happens when I touch things I shouldn't touch? Here we go, back to normal. Um, and so well, this is truly what we want. Our x-axis is our time until birthday, um, and our y-axis is length of foot. Um, for these, use row one as headers, use column B as labeled. Those are fine. We don't need to touch those. This is truly the customized portion is where you are going to actually be um, doing a lot of the work in editing and customizing this graph. I will kind of go through the simple parts that are just kind of for aesthetic purposes on how to change font, color, um, how like thick the lines are or whatever. That's kind, kind of left to you to be able to determine whether you want to um, fix those or customize those. That's not necessarily a requirement I'm asking you guys to, uh, to do, but I wanted to quickly show those to you. So chart style, um, again, background color, chart border, um, you can mess with the font. So these are all things you can play with if you'd like. Um, chart title and axis. Let's say you want to um, edit the chart title. There's two ways to do this now. One of them is right here where, look, you can mess with the chart title. There is no subtitle on this, but maybe you would want to add one. You can um, edit the, uh, the, the title of the horizontal and vertical axis here. Um, and so I'll show you in the chart title. Let's say I really wanted the first letter to be capitalized. I could just do that, okay? And it'll automatically change it here. Here's another nice thing. You could actually double click on this here and edit it right in here. So let's say I accidentally put days like that. Oops, my bad. So you could just automatically fix it there. Same thing with here. You can edit this, you can edit this here or you have the option here. Same thing with font, this, that, you can mess with all those there. Now, I'm gonna skip over series real quick because that's truly what we need. But the legend here, same thing, you can customize the position, the font, how big it is, the color. Um, same thing with the horizontal axis. These are all the same, okay? Now, over here in the horizontal axis, I will come back here for a little bit in, uh, once I'm done with the series portion, but there's some really nice things you could do with messing with the values on the bottom if necessary. So I'll come back to that. Um, vertical axis, same idea. 
Um, and so those two I'll come back in a sec. And then the grid lines is the last thing. And again, this is mainly for um, like aesthetic purposes. Maybe you want to have minor grid lines pop up like in between to help people look at the data. Maybe you don't want these big grid lines, but really I think that's actually important to have. It helps you kind of analyze the data. Um, but there's some things you can customize there. Now, I want to go to series because this is where the really important stuff is, okay? Um, when it comes to actually looking at our data points, what the expectation is, is that instead of using circles as your data points, you're using X marks. And the reason is, is a lot of times when you go through with a trend line, which I'll talk about in a second, um, it covers a lot of the data points up and you can't really tell all the, where all the specific data points are. Um, another thing you can do is mess with how big those data points are. So let's make it 14 for this one. And then you can also mess with the color. Um, my suggestion is nothing too bright, nothing too dull. Um, these blue, this blue is great. Maybe red would work, doesn't matter. Um, so I'm gonna keep it out of blue. Um, let's see, here's the next piece. So the one requirement is make them X marks. Here's the next requirement, error bars. So the error bars are taking into account just how much error you could have in your, um, in your data that you collected. So one thing that we were doing was in this lab, we were determining just how much error there was in us measuring the length of our foot. And so that was a specific number. And so we're going to use constant. Whoa. So our goal is that this error bar is as tiny and close to the data point as possible. Okay. So I had determined the error with my class. Um, and I, I believe this one was two points. Oh, my bad. 2.6 seconds of error. Okay, so we are not seconds. I'm sorry 2.6 centimeters of error So maybe we made a couple of mistakes in the way that we measured or looked at the measurement and our amount of error That we said um, could have been about 2.6 above or below uh, The actual measurement so we add that That's another requirement. So the uh, one of the last requirements is adding a trend line or something you may call a line of best fit and so a trend line, if you notice, does not go through every single data point. It basically is an average line that um, gives you an idea of what the trend is. So I'll put that in. And so if you notice, that line pops up right there. If you would like to make it a little thicker, you can make it thicker. Or maybe you want it to be a little bit more, whoopsies, a little bit more opaque, which means like a darker-ish line. Let's put it there. Let's see what happens when we put 80. You'll see that line kind of going through there. It's a little clearer. So that's our line of best fit or our trend line. That will help us determine what this relationship is by looking at this graph. Now, the last thing you're going to add is an equation. So that is the equation to this line right here. Um, this is something you will do in algebra at some point, but we will talk about what this line actually means um, every time we graph something. And so what, by looking at this trend line, we can kind of tell what this relationship is. And so I will give you an example here. Um, let's look at this data point right here that my like mouse the like the pointer arrow is on that's and I'm going to estimate here let's say that is about maybe 10 days until someone's birthday and if we look at this part their foot length is about maybe 24 centimeters okay so 10 days until their birthday about 24 centimeters in uh the length of your foot now let's go over here look still about 24 centimeters around here but look this is maybe about 230 days until left, left until their birthday. And so if you look at that, there's no connection. There's no relationship because it doesn't matter if you have 10 days from your birthday, you can have a 24 um, like uh, centimeter length of foot 
or 230 days. So the dead giveaway for this example, when you know that there's no relationship between the two variables, which are time until birthday and days and length of foot, um, it's a flat horizontal line. Or, and if you notice, this one's kind of trending up, but it's pretty flat. And so this graph, by putting this trend line in and putting these data points in, we can tell there's no relationship between these two. Now, um, that's basically it. There's nothing else you need to play with um, to kind of get all the main parts of this graph customized and set up. But the last thing I also wanted to show you was this horizontal and vertical axis. So this horizontal axis part, if you notice, there's a minimum and maximum value. And so sometimes you'll notice that most of your data is like crunched up in one specific area. And you realize that your x-axis is not at zero and you want it at zero. So you can actually put that zero value there. So let's say um, I wanted to change that and start it at 10 for some reason. That would change the way that this graph looks a little bit. Now for our example for this, we actually want it at zero. And so same thing can be done for the vertical axis over here. And this is something that you guys can play with and see what this graph looks like so that you can use most of the space in this graph. Um, it's not something that will always be done. And so I don't want you to sit there and play with it every single time. But if you notice your graph is looking a little funky, that may be something that you want to play with. Okay, um, that's basically it. Um, anytime that you want to make a graph, if you follow these steps that I showed you, you should be okay and you should be able to create this graph. There may be times that um, things are a little funky on your graph and my suggestion to you is reach out to your teacher and ask for help. Um, mainly because there are sometimes things that happen in Google Sheets that are a little weird and you do have to play around with some of those settings. Um, but it's not very common. All right, well, I hope this helped. If there are more questions, feel free to reach out, um, ask, ask a friend, ask a teacher, and we'll get you going. All right, adios.